Welcome. Uh, my name is Ben Melsky. I'm the harpist and executive director of Ensemble Down the Intake. Before we begin, I'd like to thank the America Societies in New York, our virtual host for this performance, and uh, the Music Institute of Chicago, our physical host for this performance, right here in Evanston, Illinois. The program tonight uh, exhibits a wide array of really compelling concepts and ideas that we love to showcase in all of our programs. They are original approaches to notation and improvisation, tuning and form, and we find them extremely compelling and urgent voices in the realm of new music. This program is a very Del Niente program. It exhibits, of course, composers from the Americas, including Argentina, Colombia, Cuba, and Mexico, and showcase um, the kind of meaningful conversation and the kind of exchange of ideas that we think is so important to building community across boundaries and cultures. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope you enjoy the show. Hello, my name is Tomás Hueglio, and I am the composer of the next work in the program. The piece is called Triste y Madrigal, and it's the last of a series of works that I wrote based on an Argentine melodrama from 1940 called Cita en la Frontera. Triste y Madrigal is structured as two shorter songs with an interlude in between that features sounds from the movie. Also, the text of the songs is a translation and rearrangement of tangos from the movie. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you enjoy it.
you ever believe that you can do whatever strikes your fancy? Do you understand? Nothing. Do you under- <laughs> No vino a buscar a nadie, ¿me entendés? Para nada. No le dije quiero verla lejos. ¿Qué sabes vos? Sí, sí. Yo le dije que no te mates. Que te quieras. Que te quieras. Que te quieras. No seas injusta. No seas injusta. No seas injusta. ¿Por qué? ¿Qué te quieras? ¿Qué te quieras? ¿Por qué? ¿Qué te quieras? 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 ¿Qué te My name is Amanda DeBoer Bartlett, and I'm a soprano with Ensemble Del Niente. The next piece on the program is Es Casi Como El Inicio y Comienza by Melissa Vargas. Melissa has the mind of an engineer, so the piece appears really structural on the page with lines connecting each player and creating structural relationships. But in practice, the piece is really playful. We're passing timbres between each other and creating different relationships between the instruments. Enjoy.
Hello, Siphonophora is the scientific name for a sea creature which is made up of as colonies of marine species but looks like a single uh, organism. An example is the jellyfish. So in writing Siphonophora, I allow myself to go through a process of discovery which led me to contrasting shapes and ideas but always following a thread that unites them. During the compositional process, I came across a sculpture of Thomas Glassford, which has the same title. I saw this piece at the Museo del Chopo in Mexico City. For me, the music was following a similar shape, a shape of its own, not a predetermined one. The siphonophoras themselves are masses of interweaving tentacles of different forms and colors, and this offered me the possibility of exploring the shape of the work by connecting several sections, each of them distinct in character and form, yet part of a connected and interrelated whole. The work was written also to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the festival Trayectoria, which takes place in Parma. And it's a, festi a small festival that goes, runs throughout the year, which presents the most propositional works of our time without any concessions. And this also freed my imagination and led the music to explore all sorts of different soundscapes. It was commissioned by this festival and written for originally for Ensemble Recherche, who premiered it in 2016. I am now thrilled that Ensemble Dat Miente has taken the challenge to perform this demanding work. And I'm very grateful and very excited to hear them. Thank you. Thank you. 
Good evening, everyone. This next piece is a piano solo by the wonderful Cuban composer, Tania Leon. It's called Omanacha, and it was written in 2011, and she wrote it as an homage to the Catalan composer, Javier Montsalvatge. I hope you enjoy listening to it as much as I enjoyed working on it. I think her vibrant spirit and sense of humor really comes out in the piece. There are moments of lots of frenetic rhythmic activity and then moments of suspension, kind of like traveling through time, perhaps. I wonder what you'll hear when you listen to the piece. Please enjoy. Thank you. 
Hi, I'm Michael Lewonski. I'm the conductor of Ensemble Del Niente, and I'm here to tell you about Mexican composer Julian Carrillo, who is a truly remarkable figure whose life spanned 90 years from 1875 to 1965, and whose career spanned multiple countries, including Mexico, the US, France, and Germany. While Carrillo's earlier music is in a traditional 19th century style, most associated with German Romanticism, after the Mexican Revolution, he pioneered a new compositional method that he called sonido trece, or 13th sound. This involved the use of notes beyond the traditional 12 of the chromatic scale, what we now call microtones, that is, intervals smaller than half steps. Carrillo wrote that, quote, with my theory of the 13th sound, we have in the new world the elements to be the most powerful musicians on earth. This is what the revolution of the 13th sound means, new tones, new intervals, new scales, new rhythms, new timbres, and new instruments to produce sensations. The epic of the new world is in sight." End quote. Carrillo also had instruments specially prepared to play his microtonal music, including the arpa citera. This instrument resembled something like a modern zither, which is played flat rather than upright, and is strung with metal strings. Carrillo invented this instrument such that he could divide each whole step of the octave into 16 distinct tones and distribute those resulting microtones across 96 strings. Using nearly as many strings on a modern double-strung Irish harp, we adapted the harp part to approximate the sound and tuning of the original Carrillo Arpa Citera. The present work, Preludio a Calón, was written in 1922 and may well have been his earliest work in this new experimental idiom.
Thank you.